And I'd like to invite to the podium a patriot priest from St. Polycarp, Father Tom Flowers. Well, I've got a cane, I've got diabetes, high blood pressure, and I'm 61, so I guess I am off the curve. <laughs> but I give thanks to Almighty God that when I preach at my church, I don't have anybody keeping time in front of me. <laughs> if you go online and Google, is voting a duty, there are lots of different websites that you'll find. One of them argues that it's impossible for a right or a privilege to also be a duty. About 20 years ago, I was in the position of standing in the shower giving my father a shower. And I thought to myself, oh boy, I never pictured myself doing this. And then the Holy Spirit tapped on my shoulder and said, well, guess what? Neither did your dad. <laughs> I grew up in the 50s, and we heard an awful lot about duty, responsibility, obligation. Then in my high school years in the 60s, all we heard was freedom, liberty, and rights. There is a challenge for every Christian patriot to ask the question to him or herself, is voting a right, or is it a duty? Or is it both? I was washing my father in the shower out of a sense of obligation and responsibility. And after my father passed on, I realized that it had been for me a privilege and an honor to pay back just a tiny bit of all that my dad had sacrificed for me. Now, one of the things we were taught, all of us growing up, was that when you vote, it's a secret ballot. No one knows how you vote. Well, guess what? That's not true. Because when you go into the voting booth, you cannot hang your Christianity on a coat room hook because there's someone watching you when you vote who's concerned about who you vote for, what you vote for, and why you vote. And his name is God Almighty. Our nation exists because God helped our country to come about. He birthed this nation. He made this nation a city set upon a hill, a light shining in the darkness, to be an example, to be a leader, to bring freedom and prosperity to nations across this planet. And because God invested His grace in this nation, because God invested His grace in everyone here, we have a solemn duty, as well as a right, to cast our ballot. It is a consequence of our original sin that we find it much easier to complain than to do something. We find it much easier to criticize and find fault than to look for what's right and what's good. When you see the glass and it's half empty, that's sin at work in you. When you see the glass as half full, that is God's grace and God's Holy Spirit actively working in you. In an article, a, a, a letter written by the National Catholic Bishops in 1998, they said this, we encourage all citizens to embrace their citizenship not merely as a duty and a privilege, but as an opportunity meaningfully to participate in building the culture of life. Every voice matters in the public forum. Every vote counts. 
When I was in high school, we had to raise money to pay for our senior expenses. It was 1968, so I wrote to all the politicians running for office. I got $5 from one and $10 from another, but my favorite one was the $10 I got from a fellow from Woodcrest near Newport who ran for the state senate, lost by eight votes. Every vote counts. We had a mayoral election a few years ago in Smyrna, where I now live. The mayor won by one vote. Every vote matters. The bishops go on to say, we must exercise that power in ways that defend life, especially those of God's children who are unborn, disabled, or otherwise vulnerable. We get the public officials we deserve. Their virtue or lack thereof is a judgment not only on them, but on us. Because of this, we urge our fellow citizens to see beyond party politics, to analyze campaign rhetoric critically, critically, and to choose their political leaders according to principle, not party affiliation, or mere self-interest. The psalmist tells us that righteousness exalts a nation. Righteousness doesn't happen in a vacuum. Righteousness happens when each member of our society seeks to grow in holiness. Righteousness continues when we raise our children in righteousness. Righteousness grows when we make a decision to elect leaders who are righteous. Leaders who believe in God. Leaders who respect freedom. Leaders who will live by the Constitution of the United States. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, which is sort of our second Bible, it gives a lot of information to us that helps us to live out the biblical principles, has something to say to all believers about genuine Christian citizenship. It is the duty of citizens to contribute, along with the civil authorities, to the good of society in the spirit of truth, justice, solidarity, and freedom. The love and service of one's country followed from the duty of gratitude and belong to the order of charity. Submission to legitimate authorities and service of the common good require citizens to fulfill their roles in the life of the political community. Now, what are their roles? Submission to authority and co-responsibility for the common good make it morally obligatory to pay taxes, to exercise the right to vote, and to defend one's country. I would suggest to you, I would demand of you, that there can be no Christian understanding of voting other than that it is a sacred right it is a sacred opportunity. It is a sacred obligation. It is a moral imperative. <laughs> Let us pray. Oh God, we have many important decisions to make each day in our lives. Soon we will be standing in the voting booth or at home casting an absentee ballot to make some of the most important decisions of our life. Give us two things, O oh God, through your Holy Spirit. Pour forth into our minds and to our hearts wisdom to truly know your will and courage to do your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.